Hey guys, Nick here with Picture This, and today we are going to be talking all about the Canon 24-105 F4L. So, without further ado, let's get straight into it. So, man, is it good to be back after a month. Um, I was pretty busy with a lot of stuff going on, and I didn't really have time to record videos, so super sorry about that, but I'm back now, and ready to make some more content for you guys. So, to, as I said before, we're talking about the 24 to 105 right here, and just kind of my thoughts on it. This isn't really like a scientific review. Um, not gonna be doing like any test shots or anything. I might show a little bit of some of the stuff I've shot, but nothing super scientific, talking about distortion and chromatic aberration and stuff, but just my personal thoughts on, on using it for a couple months and just, um, you know, the pros and cons of the lens. So. To start off, it has a 77 millimeter filter thread. So if you're putting any filters on there, that'll be nice to know. It's F4, which means it's got a F4 maximum aperture all the way through the entire zoom range, which is super nice because like a kit lens, for example, is like F3.5 to F5.6. And as you zoom, the image gets darker. And if you're trying to do something with video or anything like that, it's super frustrating because you have to adjust your exposure and it's just not good. And it's got image stabilization, which is super nice. So when I'm shooting some B-roll or I'm trying to do like a vlog or anything like that, the image stabilization comes in handy as well as the weight of the lens. I believe it's like 800 or something grams, but I'll put that number somewhere up here. Um, so it's not super light, but compared to other L lenses, it is. It's got full-time manual focus, which is also another great feature. So even when I have it in autofocus mode, I can still turn the manual focus ring and it will work like a charm. I can adjust focus a little bit, do whatever I want to do with that. Another nice feature. And the actual image stabilization switch has a little notch, which is nice because that's kind of like indented in there. So you're not going to accidentally switch it. And then it's got your autofocus and manual focus switch, which is standard. Um, it's EF mount. Um, not EFS. It means you can use it on all bodies and it's not crop body or full frame body specific. One of the reasons, that's one of the reasons why I bought it is because I have a crop sensor ADD and if I want to go to full frame eventually, I don't have to buy a new lens or anything like that. And I was kind of willing to accept the cons of having a full frame lens on a crop body. And with that, I guess we'll go straight into kind of the cons or the negatives of this lens. So one thing is it's a little bit on the older side. I believe this was like 1995 or maybe 1998. Again, I don't remember the exact year, but it's kind of an older lens. So the optics aren't super sharp, but for an L lens, it's incredible quality. When I bought this lens, I was like, wow, it's gonna be so good. And this lens delivered on what I was expecting compared to the newer stuff, maybe even the RF glass. Um, it's not a fair comparison, but obviously that glass is going to be sharper and it's not too bad overall. Um, there is some like vignetting and um, chromatic aberration, but it's pretty min minimal compared to the other lenses I have. Those two lenses being the 518 and the 75 3 to 300 f4 to f5.6. Um, so yeah, it's not bad uh, in terms of weight or anything. It's pretty light. Uh, it's got decent focusing, so that's not super bad about it. The only thing that I would have as a complaint is like the macro could be a little bit closer. Um, you know, again, it's not a macro lens, but that's one complaint I do have. Um, another complaint is it's not exactly as wide as I would like because obviously I'm on a crop sensor body, but it's, it's decent. It's decently wide. Um, again, this is one of the reasons why I wanted this lens is because if I go to full frame, I can still carry it over and not have to buy anything new. But one of the downsides of that is since I have a crop sensor, it's 1.6 times whatever the focal length is. So like the 24 becomes, I think like a 38 or something. And then the 105, if I just do the math real quick, it's 170 something, 180. So for if I want some extra zoom range, like I was at a zoo a couple days ago, so I was shooting there um, and that was super useful because I could get a little bit closer than 
on a full frame body where you're getting a 24 to 105 no matter what. And with a crop sensor, you're getting a little bit more. Um, other than that, I don't really have a whole lot of complaints. Just cutting in again, uh, one more negative about the 24 to 105 is the F4 aperture actually. Um, I wish if there was a 2.8 version with image stabilization, that would be the most ideal thing for me. But since it doesn't, I guess I'll deal with it. But I just wish it could go just a little bit brighter. I know on a full frame body it perform a little bit better, but still that's another complaint is that it's only F4 and not maybe F2.8 or something. Okay, back to the regular video. It's pretty decent, it's pretty fast focusing, and overall a pretty good lens. If you could find it for a good price as well, price is a big thing. I bought this lens for $400 on mbp.com. Um, if you haven't heard of them, um, this is not sponsored. If you haven't heard of them, I highly suggest go checking them out for used gear or even selling your old gear and trading it in or whatever. Um, they were pretty good about it. I was tra I traded in the T2i and I got 80 bucks back for it and it was in pretty good condition with batteries and everything. So I got about 80 bucks for it. And then I was able to put it towards this lens, which was great. They shipped it to me super quick and I have no complaints with it. They have a 14 day return policy, which is super nice too. So if something didn't end up working the way I wanted it to, I could just trade it in and that would be it. So overall, it's a pretty good lens. Um, if you're looking for an L lens, this might be the one for you if, want, if you want that good focal range. Um, the 17 to 40 F4 L, I believe also has image stabilization. So that's a pretty good lens for um, wider stuff as well. And honestly, this lens basically never leaves my camera. That's how much I like it because it's so, just so versatile. It basically does anything and everything that I need it to do. If I want to do something a little bit more specialized, that's when I'll pull out the 518. Or if I really need that zoom, that's when I'll pull out the 75 to 300. But other than that, this camera, or not this camera, this lens is always on my camera, never leaves the camera, and gets very heavily used. Oh, another thing I forgot to mention is that this lens is good weather sealed. It's got a little rubber ring all the way around. So if you have a camera that is weather sealed, um, that double weather sealing will really help. If you don't have a camera that's weather sealed, like that's fine, but at least on the lens, it'll be good. So I hope you guys enjoy this quick little video, kind of just checking back after a month and getting back into things. If you guys, again, enjoyed this video, make sure to leave a like, drop a comment, make sure to subscribe, share this video with a friend. Uh, maybe even consider checking out this lens if this is something that you are looking for. And with that, I will see you guys next time. Have a great day.